Wait, okay, and now I'm going to share screen. Okay, here we go. Um, right, so hopefully you should see my screen. Michelle, can you just confirm with me that we are yes, we can see. all good? I can see. Sweet. If Perfect. anyone can't see, just let us know in the, in the, in the awesome. chat. Um, yeah, so first off, welcome everyone. Uh, a quick introduction, I am Araminta. I started Mint Studios, a content marketing agency for fintech companies, where we help uh, use uh, fintech companies use content to acquire customers. I used to work as a marketing consultant and have worked with over 20 fintech companies on their content strategies. And today I'm joined by Michelle. She's our content strategist on our team, and she works on content strategy and managing the editorial side of things. Um, so a few, a few notes before we dive in. First of all, feel free to time it, type in questions throughout the webinar. We'll get to them in the last 15 minutes. And if we don't get to all of them, we'll make sure to answer all your questions in an email or on a separate occasion. Um, you'll also receive the recording of the webinar uh, along with the slides that we're gonna share. And uh, we're also gonna be going into quite a few details and a lot of tips and kind of actionable stuff uh, for content. So if you're wondering how that applies to your website and you wanna see it in practice, feel free to type in your website link into the chat and we'll do a live review together. So one person has already submitted it, submitted their uh, website and towards the end, we'll then kind of do a review and see in terms of content, how they're doing. If you don't want to put your own in, you can always put your competitors and we can see um, what, what they're doing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's jump in and thanks again for joining. And um, yeah, let's get started. So the main topic of today's uh, webinar. So this is us. The main topic of, of today's webinar is basically what are the top uh, 50 fintech companies doing in terms of content marketing? We're going to first look at what is content marketing like in the fintech space. Um, specifically, why is content marketing so powerful in fintech? I'm sure quite a few of you already here are, are aware of the power of, of content and, and use it already. But we kind of want to reiterate why, why especially in fintech. Then what is good content based on our own experience, working with over 20 FinTech companies, growing customer acquisition by over 700% and traffic as well. And um, our own experience of what works and what doesn't, what is the definition of good content? We're then gonna look at the top 50 FinTech companies and the research that we've done on how they're doing their content. And then finally, what is the opportunity for FinTech companies uh, based on that research? The research we did was quite straightforward. I basically worked with a virtual assistant and we took the top 50 companies based on a report and we just said, okay, do they have you know, paid ads? Do they have this? Do they have that? And then kind of we just calculated it from there. So that was the research that we did. So starting off, um, why is content marketing especially important in fintech? The, there's a few issues that basically fintech companies face. Um, and the first one that I'm going to talk about here is that we've seen that more than 50% of consumers run a search before becoming a customer. And you can see here um, what the report here shows. And it makes sense. I mean, I don't know about you, but you probably, we probably, we didn't learn much about taxes in school or mortgages or how a car loan works. So when you reach that point in your life, where do you go? You go to Google. And Google is a place where you look for information for financial topics. Um, and then the second of all, financial topics are also, you know, full of jargon, complicated topics. And especially when you're contributing hundreds of thousands or, you know, your pension to a fintech company, you're going to want to be educated and understand how it works. And that's also where Google comes in. You're going to look up what is a pension. It also happens in the B2B space. You know, what is open banking? Should I be using that as a merchant, et cetera? So that's the second one. The third one is customer acquisition costs are... Uh, very high, as I'm sure many of the people here know. Um, trying to acquire customers with ads can be very expensive based on this source. Ooh, someone's got their, I'm just gonna mute. Um, based on this source, you know, uh, acquiring customer often costs over a thousand dollars, which is um, expensive. And although we're big fans of PPC and performance marketing, in the long run, you know, they're a little bit limiting, especially if you've got a small budget. And then fourth, let me just click here. 
Fourth is uh, one of fintech companies' biggest challenge is gaining trust. We recently did a uh, report of the top 30 fintech marketers in the space, and nearly all of them said, you know, biggest challenge when it comes to fintech and marketing is building that trust as a fintech. Um, and yeah, so as you can see, whenever you're doing some research, you're going to want to make sure that they, that they trust you. Content addresses each of these issues, complexity, jargon, high customer acquisition costs, and trust. It gives the information that they want to do their research. It will fill in the financial education cap gap and help explain complicated topics. In the long run, it is uh, cheaper than paid marketing and it has many other benefits, brand building, partnerships, et cetera, PR. And then for the full content helps build trust. You know, if you're a customer and you're wanting to change pension provider, a fintech that explains to you what a pension is, how to use it, et cetera, is a lot more trustworthy in your eyes than one that doesn't. So this is kind of why content plays such a, an interesting and important role in the world of fintech and financial services. But what is good content? What, what is the type of content that really matches those requirements? So let's start with what good content isn't. Um, one here example, this is a fintech company that is a business expense card for companies. Um, would a CFO, they're targeting CFOs, would a CFO read something like, what is a startup accelerator or vendor management 101? It's, it's probably unlikely. Another example here is this is a very big B2B uh, fintech company. And, you know, they're maybe targeting heads of finance, head of operation, you know, something like why the current payment system broken. It's just not really hitting the mark. I'm not saying that you should never do this kind of content. It's just that, you know, you're, if you're targeting a specific niche and you know that they want to read about certain topics and it, you're better off covering those topics. This is another example that's a consumer for consumers. This is a fintech that helps uh, consumers with mortgages. And these, I mean, these topics are not at all related to mortgages. Um, so just in general, it's, it's just, it doesn't really hit the mark. So what is good content? We're basing this off our own experience, as I said before, working with over 20 fintech companies and growing their content and strategies. And what we've, set, what we've seen works and what doesn't work. And there's five things. You want your content to be written for the level of your reader, based on expertise, has a distribution channel a strategy, includes bottom of the funnel content and is well formatted and optimized for conversion. So we're gonna go into each one of those to see what that really means. So this is the example uh, of Argyle <laughs> that I was telling Leo earlier, but uh, basically content that is for the level of your reader means that basically ask yourself this question, would, if your target market read your blog, would you be embarrassed? Because if you are, then that is a sign that, you know, the, the content basically doesn't really hit the mark. In this case, Argyle's content is probably for product people, uh, CTOs, and the, the content they're creating is really, it is for that level, like a beginner would not understand what's going on here. So this is what, this is a, an example of uh, content that really does hit the mark. Based on expertise, so I'm sure if you're an avid online content reader, like I am, you've seen your fair share of bad SEO content. Um, and that's because it's, it's based on someone researching on Google. And, you know, sometimes that is necessary, but especially in a B2B space, you want to come across as an expert. And that means you, you want to create content that's based on expertise. The best way to do that is to uh, interview your experts usually. I mean, you can get your experts to, to write the content, but people are usually experts or great writers, and those who are both are, you know, on another level. And, and, and in order to, you know, not kind of solve that conundrum, your best bet is to interview your experts. Distribution strategy. So once you create your article or your video or whatever it is, what, what do you do with it? Where do you promote it? What do you do with it? Uh, my friend Dom has, uh, he put together a checklist of 50 different things you can do with your articles once you've published them, specifically articles in this case. And it just shows you that there's many things you can do to distribute your content. It could be promoting it via ads, posting it on social media, mm, connecting with an influencer. There's many things you can do in it, and that's quite important to make sure your content gets out there. Includes bottom of the funnel content. This is something that we've seen quite a lot. Quite a, quite a few fintech companies or companies in general seem to focus on top of the funnel content, 
Uh, so stuff like small business tips or um, you know, how to improve your payment experience, five ways to improve your payment experience. And once again, we're not saying never do top of the funnel, but it is important to include bottom of the funnel content. This is basically content that targets people who um, already know what their solution, their problem is, what the solution is, and are actively looking for solutions. We say that, you know, these are your best customers and, you know, the low hanging fruit, it doesn't make sense to create content that doesn't target these people. And you, you want to make sure that's part of your content strategy. And then finally, well formatted and optimized for conversions. Here I'm in studios quite uh, detail oriented. So we like things to look good. And, and um, that basically means, you know, you want narrow paragraphs, the font size to be big. You want it to be like easy to read basically. And also you've got your call to actions in the right place. And that's, you know, it's small things like that. But when you're a reader, a, a target, you know, a customer, potential customer reading on your phone, and you've got all the pop-ups everywhere. It's difficult to read. You have to scroll. They're just not even going to read it. So that's why it's quite important to make sure that your, your blog content is well formatted. So now let's look at the research that we did. And let's see if the top 50 fintech companies, are they, are they you know, creating content that follows this you know, five criteria that we, that we talked about? Um, so the first question was, are they, are these fintech companies, are they even investing in content and blog? The good news is yes, 88% of the top fintech companies have a website blog. That's pretty good. And 58% have more than 100 blogs on their website. 100 is not like a huge amount, but you know, it's, it's a reasonable investment, which really shows that fintech companies in general are um, focusing, well, they are investing in content. But the real question is, is it good content? So these are the five criteria that I mentioned earlier that we use at Mint Studios. And just for the sake of this research, we picked three just to make it a little bit easier. So we looked at, is it written for the level of the reader? Does it include bottom of the funnel content? And is it well formatted and optimized for conversions? So I'll just start with the first one here. Written for the level of the reader. Um, 54% was written for the level of the reader. So it might seem like that's okay, you know, 54%, that's about half. But really that means that half of these companies are creating content that completely misses the mark. Half of these companies are investing thousands every month, probably into content that their target market isn't even reading. And that, that's, that's sad, that's not, that's not good. And for B2B, which, you know, you could say it's even more important to really, you know, um, write for the level of your reader, it was, it was even less than half, it was 45%. So not so good. What about bottom of the funnel content? So just to make things simple here, we categorize bottom of the funnel content as pricing pages, uh, comparison pages. So stuff like Robin Hood versus eToro, something like that. Um, best of pages, reviews and pain points, problems, et cetera. So um, the competitor ones, only 22% are creating uh, content that is, you know, competitor A versus competitor B. And here are some examples, personal capital versus fidelity. This is the kind of content that I'm talking about. Only 22% are doing that. And only 24% are creating content that focuses on best of. So that could be, you know, best payment provider for restaurants or best trading app, this kind of stuff. So best category and only 24%. That's like, yeah, that's less than a quarter. And then finally 10%. Only 10% are creating content that targets alternatives to. This is where I really see the biggest opportunity, alternatives to. These are people that maybe don't even know your, 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 um, your product exists. And that means that, you know, that there's going to be more of them. So someone that's looking up alternatives to Robin Hood or, I don't know, alternatives to Stripe Connect, stuff like that, if it's B2B. Um, these, are, these are big opportunities. And then finally well formatted and optimized for conversions. This is what we kind of look at when we talk about well formatted. You want a paragraph width of, of about uh, 750, 18 font size, black uh, or dark font color. Um, you want to have the call to actions in the right place, paragraph breaks, and then descriptive images. So now let's see, you know, are the top 50 FinTech companies, what are they doing? 84% had narrow paragraph width, which is really good. That's great. But less than half had a font size 
bigger than 18. And I would say, you know, less than 16, that's really pushing it because, you know, people read a lot on their phones, less than 16, you're just squinting. It's just difficult to read. It's, it's really not ideal. And then 60% had call to actions embedded in the right place. That's good, but really, you know, 40% are really missing out. I mean, you can add call to actions without being too salesy or too annoying. And so um, it is really a missed opportunity, you know, to, to add call to actions and help increase conversions, really, even if it's a conversion to a newsletter or something else. If you feel that adding your product is too salesy, then you can always add a conversion to something else. We always say at the end of an article, you, you need to tell your reader what to do next. And that's where you put in your call to action. And then finally, 22% had descriptive images. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of using images like this that don't really add value, they don't make sense, they just kind of break it up, you want to add images like this one, for example. Um, and this is, uh, you know, this is add graphs, add charts, that kind of thing that really helps um, kind of explain things. It's more descriptive, makes more sense. Whereas this is, you know, if you're trying to break it up, it's better to put paragraph breaks rather than just stock images. So to summarize, are the top, what are the top 50 fintech companies doing? Is, is their content written for the level of the reader? Well, not really. I mean, half are, half are doing a good job, but there's really, there's really a lack there in, in, most of the, in half of them. Are they doing bottom of the funnel content? Well, as we've seen, less than a quarter are really creating those types we mentioned. And that's really also uh, a shame. And to summarize, you know, no, not really. And then finally, um, are the blogs well formatted? Are they optimized for conversions? Um, it's not bad, but really there is still some opportunity. As we mentioned before, uh, some people, as we mentioned before, you know, you could you know, improve the font size, add more call to actions and improve the images if that's you know, something you can do. So just to summarize everything that we've talked about, what is good content? Why is content important in FinTech for FinTech? And based on what we've seen the top 50 companies doing, what is opportunity here for FinTech companies? Well, first of all, create blog content. There's a few things that, you know, I don't want to say every single FinTech company should do content because sometimes it might not make sense. But if you're wondering, some good kind of criteria to look for is, does your target market require a lot of education? Um, are they doing a lot of research online? So this happens a lot for, you know, for example, if you're a tax product, because people don't understand tax, so they're going to do a lot of research. Or even an open banking product, this is something that's relatively new. So people will be doing a lot of research for that. Are you also able to acquire customers cold? This is quite an important one as well, um, mostly because, you know, if you're only acquiring customers via network or via um, net, uh, some other method, um, then you're, you're not really sure if you can acquire them without them knowing about your brand. So that's quite an important one. And then finally, um, it's, it's, it's obviously very important to have subject matter experts on your team who are happy to do interviews and talk to you about specific topics. If you don't have that, then you can maybe look at, you know, talking to external experts, but it's still a little bit more tricky. It's always easier when you've got your experts on your own team. So if you check all those boxes, then that's a good sign that content is the right thing for you. Also, you know, something that we look at is if you've already seen people coming in through organic and you've already seen some results, that's a really good sign. And, you know, that's a sign to, to scale it up. And then the final opportunity is, yeah, to create better content. As we've said, following those, those criteria that we, that we mentioned, um, that means content that's written for the level of the reader, try and base it on interviews with experts if possible. Uh, and it also means why not do bottom of the funnel content? right? It's some um, content that your target market is looking for already. There are people who are ready to convert and it's just, it just makes sense to include it. You know, you, it doesn't mean you don't have to do the rest at the top of the funnel, but just, it makes sense to include it. And we, when we start working with fintech companies, bottom of the funnel is usually the first thing we'll do to make sure that we can start seeing some results and traction early on. And then finally, um, we, yeah, well formatted and optimized for conversions. It's very small, very easy to do, and it can make a really big difference for your readers and therefore hopefully for your own customers. So that's kind of a summary of um, the different 
opportunities that we see in fintech and uh yeah if you want to learn more i know that we covered a lot i know we covered a lot in this webinar so if you want to learn more we you can check out our blog our newsletter we also have a slack group if you have specific questions to ask um but yeah thank you so much for for listening in and paying attention i am now going to review a couple of websites uh, i don't know if anyone has posted anything yet uh oh, but yet. if not no that's fine um also feel free to add in your questions if you've got any or anything that you'd like us to cover in terms of fintech or content in general um and yeah i'm just gonna start with the, the first website that was submitted let me exit that uh sweet so paywork is uh a company that um they asked me to just review their website uh, from what I understand, Paywork is a buy now, pay later solution um, that they're targeting, from what I understand, merchants mostly with their website. Uh, yeah, and not the end customer. So the first thing I usually do is obviously check out the blog. <laughs> um, and just based on everything I'm seeing here, it, it was it is a little bit difficult to do a review here because there's not that much content so it's a little bit tricky um but so i mean the first thing that i would probably look at is what kind of content are we seeing first off uh, we're seeing mostly content that is focused on either the team or um the product and that's okay but it just you know if i'm a target market if i'm a merchant and i read this this is not this is not really educating me just yet. So it, it helps me learn about the company, but I'm still not very sure about BNPL. I'm not really sure if that's what I need. Um, so it, it makes sense to I think create some content here that's more educational and focused on the pain points of merchants. Um, there's also of course an opportunity here to create uh, bottom of the funnel content. So I'm imagining that PayWorks. Competitors are people like uh, Klarna or Afterpay, that kind of thing. So people are probably merchants are perhaps comparing, you know, Klarna versus another solution, and ranking for these specific keywords is probably really, really, really valuable. So uh, to pay work, I would probably recommend yeah, looking at this kind of bottom of the funnel content, and then also um, looking at possibly some more content focused on pain points and use cases. So just some examples, let's, let's look at their website. So maybe perhaps something like uh, a merchant that's researching BNPL for, you know, specifically in three parts, that's a specific use case that maybe they would be interested in or one click integration EU market. So maybe we, we can imagine a BNPL uh, sorry, a merchant looking for a BNPL solution in the EU market. That could be a specific phrase that might be interesting to target. Um, and then, or maybe a plugin. Uh, so ima imagine they're looking at BNPL plugin. That could be a very interesting phrase to, to try and uh, rank for. Um, so yeah, use cases, pain points. Usually what we like to do for this part is, is um, chat to the sales team, chat to the product team, and really understand um, what the, the pain points are of the target market. And then based on that information, we can kind of say, okay, this kind of content works. Um, obviously it's targeting a specific pain point. Let's just, let's, let's start with that. So if we then dive in, so let's see pay work. I'm gonna open the, one of the blog articles. In terms of formatting, I think it looks really good. Uh, the one thing I would say is maybe to make it a little bit um, make the font weight a little bit uh, larger, just because this could be a bit, you know, a bit thin, a bit harder to read. I might also add a few more paragraph breaks to make it um, also easier to read, and maybe some call to actions. Although I am aware that this is quite product focused, but you know, if someone is reading this and they're interested in signing up, there's no, you know, there's no, you you don't lose anything by just adding a button at the bottom here. And um, and here also, or sometimes also in the introduction, we like to add one as well. Um, 
so yeah, that's kind of a review of paywork in general. I think the website is, looks great and uh, it's, it's um, yeah, I just, I, I would just recommend doing some